Oh, Haley, how's it going? Yes, good. How are you? Hey, doing good. Thanks for uh, waiting patiently and and uh, and letting me get the housekeeping out of the way. Uh, really looking forward to your presentation. I love uh, the company and the focus on customer experience. I honestly wish I just I had all of the knowledge from all of the split tests that you guys did in my head. I think this would be like you know if there was just a way to like download that into my mind and into every e-commerce. Uh, store owner's mind. I can only imagine the the revenue that would be saved or made from it, right? I mean, it's just incredible, right? Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sadly, it's a it's always a hard process, but I have a feeling you're going to help us shortcut a little bit of it today. So yeah. with that said, I'll let you take it away. We'll add your slides here and I'll just mosey off into the background. Um, well, <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you. Well, hello, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon, wherever you are. Thank you for joining us today. I know everyone has busy schedules. Thank you to e-commerce tech for having this event and allowing me to speak here today. I love this topic. I get very jazzed about it. This particular session is on winning in the retention economy and talking about it a bit at a higher level. So uh, I am Haley Carpenter, as you probably already know. I'm a senior CX strategist at Spiro. And we are a customer experience optimization agency, CXO for short. And so we do a lot of user research and building and running and growing experimentation programs for clients, which is a lot of what I spend my time on and do day to day. Uh, so that's why I am qualified to be here. And I love connecting on LinkedIn. I'm very active there. So please reach out. I love to hear from people and get connection requests. But enough about me, we only have so much time. So I want to start with how did we get to the retention economy and this place of focusing on retention so much and why is it so critical? There are, of course, a bunch of things that have factored into this, but I want to mention a couple that are hyper relevant for the sake of today's conversation. Starting with rising acquisition costs, they have just gone up and up and up. Uh, and kind of related, there is so much pressure and I see this day to day and it's quite common. And in my experience, from what I've seen, I would say this increases over time as well, is too much pressure to focus on short term strategies and quick win tactics that drive revenue and short term growth and allow you to maybe hit uh, an end of month goal or an end of quarter goal. But they're really not focused on long term growth and sustainability. And then lastly, for the sake of today's conversation, um, there's more competition than ever before. It's truly insane and it also just continues to increase. Uh, and so all of this factors into why we're here and leads us to the retention economy. So with that in mind, I'm going to throw a stat out at you because of course we all love those. This came from uh, the Harvard Business Review. But the cost of acquiring new customers is five to 25 times more expensive than retaining your existing business. That's bonkers. I'm gonna repeat it again because it is so important to understand. The cost of getting new business is five to 25 times more expensive than just keeping the business that you already have. And winners understand in this retention economy that just a 5% increase in customer retention leads to a 25 to 95% increase in profit. What? Why would you not focus on retention if this is the case, right? Um, so hence, we're in a retention economy. This is what we're talking about. It's why there's a whole event on retention and loyalty. And those who do focus on it will succeed and those who don't will fail. So, with that, I'm going to pose a scenario that I'm sure a lot of you have encountered, um, if not all of you. How often does your manager or your CEO or someone on your team come to you and say, look, Susie, we have a revenue deficit this quarter. We need more sales. We need to increase our revenue. How can we do that? I need you to put some strategies together and lead the effort to close the gap. Well, most businesses would probably focus on acquisition and put money there, for example, right? But that's a short-term strategy. 
short-term focus. It's not going to help you long-term or in a pandemic, which we all know can happen uh, and have experienced now. So what should you do about that as an e-commerce business? And I have two things for you. First being improve your customer experience, improve your CX. I want your customers to be as happy as this adorable dog riding down this conveyor belt in his customer experience to check out. I want them to be delighted to come back to you. And I want them to think of you uh, when they go to purchase whatever you're offering or sign up for whatever you're offering over your competitors. So improve your CX. That's the first thing. Second, measurement. I cannot harp on this enough. It is critical. We see broken setups all the time. And it's worth the effort to get this right. And if you're not doing measurement of any kind, which I find that really hard to believe in today's environment, or say that you know that your setup is poor and your measurement is maybe inaccurate, or you're thinking, eh, you know, it's okay, we've got the gist of it. I am going to poke you like this cat is getting poked with a ruler right now and poke you to say, hey, get your measurement in order, get that in line, because it is so important. Um, so those are the two things that I would like you to focus on to improve your loyalty uh, and your retention. And so moving on, you could say, well, that's great. But where do I start? Where do I start to improve my CX and my measurement? And I will say that in all cases, really, you should start with research and understanding your customers. Um, so for example, can you answer these questions? Are customers realizing why you're better than competitors? How many return customers do you even have? What is it about you and your business that is unique that makes people come back to you? If you can't answer questions like that, that is further proof that you need research, um, but you really need to dig into these things and, and really get that voice of customer data and compare that with things like analytics, for example. And when I say research, if you have no idea where to start, if you're not familiar with research uh, or that is overwhelming, we do have a model here at Sphere that we use that's proprietary uh, to us and, and CXL. It's called the Research Excel model. We use this across all of our clients in all cases. I've used it time and time again and seen success over and over. Um, and I'm not gonna go into how to do these different methods and, and really into the weeds. That's a whole other webinar. Um, but if you use something like this model, it ensures that you cover all prime areas of optimization. It tells you what to do and where to do it and ensures that you have a good balance of quantitative and qualitative data. So just know that you need to do research. Uh, and if you're not doing any at all right now, please get started with some. And if you need resources on this and the different pieces and, and more in the weeds on this, there's a lot out there and shameless plug for CXL Institute, go check them out. They have a lot on this. Um, but once you do your research, you'll get those research insights that you need. And so the next thing that you should do with those is prioritization. And prioritization is absolutely critical. And I will say this is another piece that we see that needs a lot of work all the time. Uh, and there are tons of frameworks out there for this. So you may have heard of Pi, Ice, here at Sphero, another thing proprietary to us is our PXL framework. And we use this in uh, all of our accounts. I've used it time and time again and seen success with this. And I absolutely love it. Sure, I'm maybe a little biased, but it is truly an amazing framework. So um, this will help you objectively rank your, your test ideas that came from your research insights so that you can move forward in the most impactful, effective, and efficient way because we all have limited resources, right? All have limited time. Um, effort, team members, money, whatever it may be. Um, and so please use a framework. And then uh, I mentioned objectivity, which I think is an important quality of a framework. Also, if you don't use PXL, if you choose to use something else, I encourage you to think about one that's scalable and one that is customizable to your business case. Um, but once you prioritize your insights, then 
go, go, go on the testing. Then you get the green light there and it's all hands on deck for your tests. And this is a, a really high level simplified overview of our experimentation process here at Spiro. So like I've said, we start with our research, we prioritize our insights in that framework, then we move to testing and that is a continuous loop. It's a continuous process that goes around and around. Um, so you test, you analyze the results, of course, and then you iterate or you go to the next test in your queue. Um, and you could also say the same for research. You should be doing that continuously to make sure you have the most up-to-date data because we all know things change. And you should be constantly checking in with your prioritization because those uh, priorities uh, can actually change as well or, or your internal priorities. So it's good to check in there on a constant basis too. Um, and so after all of this, there might be some of you still saying, well, Haley, I can just set up a loyalty program, right? That will solve all of my problems. What are you dilly-dallying around with this stuff for? Wrong, that will not solve all of your problems. As you might guess, there are hundreds of ways that you can go about uh, improving your customer experience um, and to go about finding what will work. It, you, you just have to have experimentation. Um, and you need to, to validate that things are actually helping uh, through measuring performance. And of course, we all know that every single idea is not a winner. So in the event that something is actually a losing idea, through experimentation, you have risk mitigation um, and you can avoid losing revenue or losing performance on whatever your metric is for that particular idea. Um, avoid avoid those losses through this experimentation. And then of course you gain learnings that you can share out so your experimentation program can actually serve as a data layer for other teams where you can share out, up, down, in all directions so that the learnings can be fully maximized elsewhere uh, as well. And then of course we all know that you can iterate, 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 and you should because say you find a winning version there may be an even more optimal one out there. So I cannot harp on experimentation enough, assuming that you have enough traffic for this, you should absolutely be doing it. And then if you don't measure your efforts, just quit now and I'm gonna give you this face. Uh, if anyone's a fan of Superstore, shout out to Super Superstore, I'm a, a big fan, um, you know this character and I, I will absolutely give you this face. Um, so on that note, I'm not going to dive into the weeds of analytics or what a broken setup looks like or the weeds of setting up metrics. That's a whole other area. Um, but one that I did want to call out uh, is the difference between churn and retention. We know it can be difficult to tell the difference. I do have the calculation for churn rate here and a link to an article that goes into more detail about that in case you're interested. Um, but I wanted to, to call out that it is a bit of an art and a science and depends on your business case, of course, but it is worth the effort to figure it out, I promise you. Um, and then tying this all back together, right? And then you can go back to your research and figure out what's causing this churn and then experiment and see if you can improve that over time, right? So here's a bit about that and then some other metrics to consider on the topic of loyalty and um, retention are CLV, customer lifetime value, AOV, average order value, average number of purchases, customer lifespan, and retention rate. So if some of these are unfamiliar to you or you're, you don't have any of these or some of these set up, I encourage you to dig in here and get these set up and, and look into it. And I have linked out to some more articles as well for more information. And so to quickly recap where we're at, we've talked about research, prioritization, experimentation, a bit on measurement and why that's important. And I think it's appropriate to wrap up with a couple of examples. So I want to pose another question to you to ponder as we go through these. Do you know when customers need to hear from you versus when they want you to actually leave them alone? Side note, if you don't know the answer to these questions, more proof that you need to be doing some research. Um, but keep these in mind as we go through these examples. And the first one is for the books. 
a flower company. And I don't know about you, but when I think of flower companies, I just think that's a one-time purchase. I'm like, oh, I'll get some for my mom for Mother's Day. I'll get some for my friend for her birthday. I don't, I don't need flowers after that. But actually, personally, I also love flowers. I try to have some fresh on my table all the time. They bring me so much joy. But like I said, I, I wouldn't really think of this as a, a subscription type of thing. So if you actually look here in the books, the, the section that I have outlined in red, they of course have that option for you to have the one-time purchase, but they nudge you to sign up for a subscription and get a discount if you do that. So when I'm checking out, I'm like, oh, that's an amazing idea. I love flowers. I can send them out. I love it. I'll sign up for this sus subscription and get 30% off. Why not? And then they list some benefits there. So this is an instance where they actually need you uh, or, or you need to nudge them as the company, nudge the customer, and this will help your, your uh, retention. Perfect. Um, and I don't want to undersell the complexity of this, right? And make it seem like you can just go get this done in five minutes. Um, but things like this, I would encourage you, they're, they're worth the effort. Um, and I do want to emphasize, of course, that you need to have the right execution, the right UX, the right messaging, the right timing, the right segment for this type of stuff. So again, research can help you find that out. Uh, and then you, you follow it up with the prioritization and the experimentation to make sure that you get it right. Um, but I love this example. And of course, I'm, I'm obsessed with flowers. So um, I'm a little biased there. But another example is Black Rifle Coffee Company. Another instance where I love this company. I love their products. So I was doing some personal shopping, put some items into my cart got distracted or something, you know, I didn't finish to check out. And then later I got this email and I was like, oh, this is an amazing email. What a good strategy. It's asking me, hey, did life get in the way? And I was like, yes, actually life did get in the way. I forgot I was in the middle of my checkout. And it was encouraging me to come back to my shopping cart. And then, you know, from there you just, you get your coffee and bam, easy peasy. I put in my order, they got my business. I have shopped with them before. Um, but another thing to consider. And then go supplements. I like to work out. I do occasionally take some supplements. And if you look here at the section that I have outlined, you'll see, of course, you can pay normally with your card, but they also have loyalty program where you can pay with points. This would absolutely encourage me or someone to come back to ghost over another brand if I can just use my points, if I can just get rewarded for continuing to shop somewhere for a place that I already love, why would I not do that? Um, so, you know, another thing to consider, all these are really great and I would say actually pretty decently sized strategies um, for loyalty and retention. So hopefully this demonstrates some of the, the concepts I've brought up. And with that, that is actually the end of my presentation. So I think now we can open it up for some discussion and Q&A. Absolutely. Haley, thank you so much. If you've got questions for Haley, please put them now in the chat box. It should be somewhere down below you. Rule says, awesome content being shared now. Uh, uh, great to hear. I shared your research model out on, uh, on, on Twitter and LinkedIn. I want to pull it back up here, actually. Perfect. Uh, in here. In fact, if you want to go to the slide, um, yeah. I'm looking at it in my notes. Da, 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 da. Um, yeah, where is it? Skip back to yeah, it. There it is. Yeah. Um, so let, walk me through some of these things. Let's imagine I'm an e-commerce founder, who uh, maybe a small team. Maybe I'm the CMO or head of marketing or head of e-commerce. And I've got the 400 things that I have to do in my daily job but I obviously need to do a better process researching. Maybe I can't afford what I'll just assume is like an $8,000 a month uh, agency uh, such as yourself, um, and, but I, I wanna make my way towards that on my own. Where, you know, Out of this, this list, where, where should I begin? Uh, assuming that I am good with my tracking framework you know, and, and all that stuff, what do you think is the most important component of all of this? 
Yes. Oh, that's a good question. I know. It's, so, it's tough because we've got to do it all, but. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So I'll say when we do it, you know, this is our main jam. So we will try and tackle all of this at once. But in a lot of cases, that's not always possible, like you say. So you can absolutely tackle these pieces one at a time or maybe two or three at a time. And a really, um, I, I would say, lower barrier to entry or lower um amount of resources is needed it would be a heuristic analysis assuming that you have the expertise either in yourself or in someone on your team that's a good place to start just what, to start what does that looking mean at exactly like give me an example of a this is like looking at the navigation yep. and saying ah, this is clicked more than that or that that actually might be more of an analytics audit so what yeah you know, is it just like figuring out what goes before the next thing <laughs> Good question. So it's not really using any data sets like GA or uh, Hotjar poll data. It's mostly just, a, I would say, an aesthetic visual analysis based on your past experience and your expertise. So that's where that expertise piece comes in. It's really beneficial to make sure that you have some of that where you know best practices what to look for, um, such as the navigation or messaging, like a value proposition. Do you have one? Is it good? So, um, you know, things like that. There's all kinds of information out there on optimization best practices. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really just without data sets. So and looking with your expertise. Ideally, and I bet you guys have a great article on this. You look at like 30 best design practices and then you just kind of check them off the list to make sure you're doing all of them. Perhaps that's that's the easiest place to start without actually saying, are they working for me? Are they the best for me? You just kind of go through what somebody has claimed is the best practice and do it. I'll give I'll give one example on that. Uh, you tell me if you've ever seen it work, but it's the it's the um, the the slider graphics, especially on the home page, that auto slide to the next one. Every slide, every piece of movement in slider, from what I, uh, all the research I've seen, reduces conversion rate. Is that Have you seen that as well? I have seen that in some cases. It's You've really it on work. a case by case. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, it's, it's really on a case by case basis. I would say, this is quite the can of worms, but I would say that if you're new to optimization, you're not familiar with best practices and you need to start just somewhere. Sure, I would say, you know, start with a checklist or a framework. Like you said, that's not necessarily saying those things will work, uh, but it, you know, you gotta start somewhere so that that could be a place to do that. Um, yeah. But it does help to have some of that experience and expertise tied in with that. Yeah, I, I'm totally with you. And I, I think the, you know, that's that might and we're we're talking our, our the the of course the merchant we're kind of talking to today is is established growth stage and uh and ready for these things but i think a lot of merchants even the 10 million dollar merchant isn't always uh ready to have the bandwidth to uh to to have the expert on hand um and they're they're trying to to make it work themselves so on the starting source side i think the checklist is very important on the growth stage side, I, I think the number one thing you should be doing if you've got over 20,000 visitors, especially over 50,000 visitors, it's got to be split testing, right? Absolutely. Please test things. I could harp on this all day long. <laughs> um, it, but it, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I, I'm just I'm just wondering. So like, what do you think it is that is preventing merchants from actually running the uh, split test themselves? Because with Google Optimize, you can do it for free and usually you don't even need any coding. So like, what what do you think it is that, that brings this barrier to merchants? <laughs> yeah, so I think um, one is people just don't want to wait sometimes for a test. There's this urgency and like I said, that need for quick wins. Uh, to so hit whatever goal might be coming up. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> execute, execute. I don't have time to test. Um, but, you know, like I said, in some of those cases, not all things are winning. So you may have actually implemented an idea that's a losing idea, and then you'll lose revenue or whatever, you know, performance you're looking to gain from it. Um, so really, experimentation is key. Yeah. I, I agree completely. And it, uh, I, I don't know, it kind of drives me crazy personally that to see such success from a store, you know, like a, a Shopify plus merchant doing 5 million, never once done a split test. And I'm like, guys, 
you have, there's got to be another million just sitting here, right? Like if right? you've ever done a test. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's bananas. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jim is asking us uh, the specifics on calculating retention. Uh, and I think um, I think retention is generally calculated um, uh, the same way across all businesses as long, well, there's two types, I guess. There's subscription businesses and non-subscription are slightly different, but the same model is probably put forward. Do you wanna give us your favorite equation for calculating retention? I, I have my own as well. <laughs> I'll let you go first if you have a favorite one. If you're oh, it's, about you know, it. it's just, um, I mean, at the end of the day, retention is uh, repeat purchase. So the first thing I like to calculate is our average repeat purchase time frame. So that would be anybody that purchased two or more times. What's the gap between the first purchase and the second purchase? And you can start there with the average repeat purchase time frame. And then, uh, of course, retention is anybody that's bought two or more times from you, but you might see retention trail off into the third or fourth. So a cohort analysis looking at who bought in May of last year, and then when did they buy again? So you can see the number, the percentage of people that bought in June, July, August, September, et cetera. And then you can that'll be calculated as, as retention by month in that cohort. And then of course you can sum all of those up to think about retention over the last 12 months from that one cohort. You've probably got a, a better way to do, oh, and then I'll just plug that some works. tools to do this. <laughs> yeah, 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 go for it. A tool called uh, Segments by Trestle is uh is really uh great it just auto calculates this for you and they have a competitor called uh peel insights i'm pretty sure both of these you plug them in either either which one uh you plug them into your store they're going to cost a little bit of money they're going to give you all your retention metrics right there um, and you can tell them i sent you by the way <laughs> all right uh, go ahead so it, you're any any thing i missed there on on retention no, that was a good I, answer. I, well, I, I wasn't supposed to answer this question. Sorry. <laughs> it's fine. You seem passionate about it, so it's all good. It's, it, you know, it's it's always one of those things where it's, um, it feel, this is another kind of re, along the lines of why you don't split test. People don't like to uh, calculate retention because um, because it takes a while to calculate it. And it's like, okay, like, so it's like you started a store, things are going really well. You obviously can't calculate retention on month one. So you're just like, ah, I'll put that off for a few months. Six months later, you got 400 fires going on in the business. And so you never actually go back and see what your repeat purchase rate is. And it's and then so you worth the effort though. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things that I think um, as a business expands in what product market fit looks like for it, which is always, there's always changes in product market fit. Um, just like, you know, every, every change in the economic environment, every change in your product line, every change in your marketing channel or strategy has an impact on what is, you know, technically called product market fit. And so, um, so your retention is going to change based on those factors. And so you need to monitor it, understand it create hypotheses around it. Um, yeah. All right. So I'm just ranting on here. This isn't the purpose of this. <laughs> this uh, all good. But um, all right. So we've, we've said that the going through a checklist is the easiest thing you could do here. User testing is, uh, is also mandatory for anybody else. Maybe walk me through a couple of quick analytics audit wins that we can do, and then we'll, we'll move into the next presentation right after. Yeah, so a big one I would say first and foremost is check your goals and your events to make sure that you have them and you have the right ones, but that they're also set up correctly. And also the funnel reports so that you can do analyses there and see where people are falling out and the biggest parts of your site that you should maybe optimize and focus on first. I would say those are two big areas right away you should jump into and, and check those out if you haven't already. Yeah, love it. And then, all right, finally, give us your quickest uh, copywriting hack advice. Like, how can I become a better copywriter in 60 seconds? <laughs> Shameless plug, go to Winter. That is our new copy testing tool. And that will help you with your messaging and get it, um, you know, to a, a great place faster than anything I've seen. And I, I love it. So go check out Winter. Where do you give me a, a link? Is it Spiro? Yeah. I think it's winter.io is what I want to say. Okay. Double check here. Yeah, it's winter right. winter.com now. I think they've changed oh, it. Wow, you guys have winter.com. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. W-I-N-T. Okay, here but... it is. 
No, uh, this is my w y n t e r dot com. Uh, Can you put it in the comments for some reason? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh, w y got it. Okay, sharing yeah. it with everybody now. I love it. Awesome. Haley, thank you so much for joining us today. I think we've got a lot to think about as it uh, pertains to understanding our customers better, understanding how they're going around on our site, how they're engaging. And thank you so much for the cute puppy gif as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Have a good one, everybody. All right. With that, we're moving right into the next session.